I have been teaching on the subject, they will have a form of godliness, but they will deny the power thereof. And today many religious systems have that problem. They deny the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. They do not believe and they do not teach that salvation comes alone through the cross of Jesus Christ. Many people today are fearful. They do not want to listen to people who proclaim the, go uh, the gospel because they are afraid of being led astray. But the Bible teaches us in 1 John chapter 4, it tells us, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. How do you try a spirit? How do you try somebody who comes along preaching? You check him out with the word of God. So this is how you try the spirit. Don't starve yourself. Because the Bible teaches that in the last days there shall not necessarily be a hunger for bread, but a hunger for the word of God. Where do you stand on this subject? Are you closing yourself off to different preachers or teachers of the gospel? Where is your ability of, uh, to, to test the spirits? Or are you depending on your leader or on your preacher to test the spirit for you? Don't allow that to happen. For the Lord God wants a personal relationship with you and he also wants to set you free where you are dependent on nobody. The Apostle Paul had the same problem with the Jews for he saw the problem the Jews went out to establish their own righteousness, but they did not establish their righteousness to knowledge, for they did not understand the righteousness of God. They did not understand the righteousness that God demanded, and this is the exact same problem we have today. Many, many people don't understand the righteousness that God demands of them. And today I want to teach on this subject. But before I get into this message, I will ask the Lord to bless us. Heavenly Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. And I pray, O oh God, that you will bless this message. You will open the hearts of them that are listening. Lord God, I want you to bring them freedom so that they will rejoice in their salvation and they will be able to be free to communicate with other believers. I thank you, O oh God, for the grace and the mercy that you have given us. I thank you for the freedom. I thank you for the word of God. I ask you to bless this message today. In Jesus' name, Amen. The Apostle Paul had a very similar problem that we have today. His heart's desire was that Israel might be saved. And this is what most pastors who are passionate for God, this is what their desire is, that people will be saved. And they will cry out and sound the alarm. But many people will be turned away from them because there is a terrible fear of being led astray. For the Bible teaches in the last days there shall be perilous times for many will come to deceive. But you don't have to be afraid of that for the Lord God has given us a book to check out those who come bringing whatever gospel. There is only one true gospel. We have to understand that. And that is laid out step by step, page by page in the Bible. So there is no need for fear. The Lord God demands righteousness from everyone. And today I want to speak on this righteousness. So don't miss this opportunity to seek out the righteousness that God wants 
from you. It is available to you. You can have the righteousness of God. It tells us in Romans chapter 10, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. But I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, are going about to establish their own righteousness and having not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And here we see the problem. They want to have righteousness, but they go about to establish their own righteousness because they do not submit themselves to the righteousness of God. They do not believe the righteousness which God has set before us. And who is that righteousness? The righteousness is Jesus Christ himself. For it tells us in verse 4, For Christ is the end of the law for, ev for righteousness to everyone that believes. What does this scripture mean? It tells us that Christ is the end of the law. In the Old Testament, God used Israel and the law for his righteousness. But once Christ came, Christ ended that era and he became the righteousness of God. And that righteousness comes on anyone who believes on him. This may sound foreign to many people who are trying to attain their righteousness by good works. But that's nothing new because the Jews had the same problem. They tried to establish their own righteousness because in reality they did not understand the righteousness of God. And what is the righteousness of God? The righteousness of God is purity, holiness, all the time, not just some of the time. The Israelis could not achieve righteousness because they looked for righteousness the wrong way. How did they look for it? It tells us in verse 31 that Israel followed after the law of righteousness, could not attain the law of righteousness because they sought it not by faith, but they sought it by the works of the law. Thus they stumbled at the stumbling stone. This is the problem. They could not receive righteousness because they thought righteousness came by works, by doing something for God. When you study Mark chapter 7, it teaches us that the Israelis were more concerned with washing of pots and paints and all that stuff than in having grace and mercy with people. Thus, they stumbled at the stumbling stone. And who is that stumbling stone? It is Jesus Christ himself. It tells us in verse 33, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense, and whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed, or should we say, shall not regret it. This is actually what this word ashamed means. I'm asking you today, have you received the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God is purity and holiness and perfection. Can you achieve righteousness, the righteousness of God, by yourself? The Bible teaches us in Romans chapter 3 verse 21. It talks of a righteousness that is manifested unto us. It tells us, but now the righteousness of God without keeping the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by the faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. 
How do you achieve righteousness? It is your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that brings you righteousness. What kind of righteousness is that? The, the, the Bible teaches us that the righteousness of God is purity, holiness. How can we, a fallen sinner, become as righteous as God? To our understanding, it is impossible because nobody in his right mind will dare to proclaim that he is as righteous as God. But when we look at the Word of God, when we trust what the Word of God says, all of a sudden we see something. When we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, when we believe in what He did on the cross for us, what did He do? He paid for your sin and my sin. He took care of them. He annihilated them. He canceled them totally. So what does this mean? If I don't have a sin on me, if I don't have one sin on me, that makes me righteous. That makes me holy. That makes me perfect. And that makes me pure. Thus, I become as righteous as God. Oh, this is so incredible. And, and, and let me tell you, it is fearful even to think of it. But when you study the Word, this is exactly what it says. We become righteous with God. We become ri as righteous as God because we put our faith in the finished work of the cross. This is the best news that a person can hear. And I want to say this, if you are not as righteous as God, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven, for no sin can enter through that door. So I'm asking you today, what are you depending on? Are you depending on some rule, law, or regulation, or church system? To win your righteousness or gain your righteousness? If you are, then you have a form of godliness. But in reality, you will be ashamed and you will regret it. Because the Bible teaches us that you have a form of godliness, but you deny the power of God. And what is the power of God? The power of God is faith in the finished work of the cross. The power of God is faith in Jesus Christ. Therefore we conclude the Bible teaches us in Romans chapter 3 verse 20, 28 that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. This is Bible teaching here. This is not something that I'm grabbing out of the air and trying to present to you. I am reading it to you straight from the Word of God. It tells us, what can we boast about then? Nothing. We have absolutely nothing to brag about because we don't have any works. It's nothing we do by ourselves. It is just because we believe what Jesus did for us. I want to repeat that scripture again. Romans chapter 3 verse 28. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So study on that. Read Romans. It is a beautiful chapter. It is a beautiful book to read. It will show you who you are in Christ Jesus if you dare to believe what the Word of God proclaims. And those of you who don't know Jesus, it's very, the end is very close. We are coming to the point where we see things happening that have never happened before. 
pestilences, earthquakes. We have never seen AIDS since 19, before 1980. It is now covering all of the world. And there's new diseases coming out all the time. Where do you stand? Are you taking the warnings of the Lord Jesus Christ seriously? Where he said, when you see these things begun to come to pass, lift up your heads, for my redemption draw near. Are you taking it seriously? Or are you just carelessly going about your way? Well, be warned. Jesus loves you. He wants to save you from the clutches of Satan. Many people, after they become Christians, will spend most of their life struggling with their Christianity, not fully understanding who they are in Christ. Thus, they will focus on trying their best to please God in the flesh, and they will a lot of times become miserable because they will see their failures, and a lot of times that brings depression on a person. For we can never measure up to the standards that God demands in the law. We have to take it by faith that we have become righteous through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Instead of focusing, putting all our attention on trying to please God in the flesh, we should focus on bringing others to Christ and then we will automatically live for Christ. We will spend less time trying to keep away from the things of the world because we will be involved in bringing people to the knowledge of the truth. The Bible teaches us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. What does this mean? The Lord God, after we become a new creation, has given us a ministry, and that is reconciling the world unto God, bringing the world to God, to Jesus. Thus, we become ambassadors for Christ. The Lord God will open your heart and your mind today and make you a blessing. Amen.